Hi, I'm Ari Lynette, and today's video is a two-in-one. So to tie in with this video, I am wearing on my eyes today one of my favourite Colourpop palettes, the Salvaje palette, in collaboration with Becky G. I talk about how this is a really underrated palette, and I will never stop talking about it until people finally realise that uh, it's a banger. But I did this look today kind of as a tie-in to the video I'm doing today. So I've been planning on doing a second instalment of redesigning eyeshadow palettes, which I did earlier this year, and it turns out that all of the palettes I had redesigned were Colourpop palettes, and then the other ideas I have were kind of too undeveloped or not very good. But all of the ones that would have made it into a video were Colourpop palettes, so I thought, oh cool, I can make a redesigning eyeshadow palettes Colourpop edition. But then, I watched a video that came out a couple of weeks ago, I think, from Amy Loves Makeup here on YouTube. She uploaded a video all about concepts for Colourpop palettes that she'd want to see next, and I thought, oh my god, that's a great idea. Even I've got some ideas for cool Colourpop palettes that could come out. Especially concerning the monochromatic or nine pan palettes. I have quite a few different ideas concerning those, so I could have had a little bit of a decision to make. Should I do a redesigning eyeshadow palettes video featuring all Colourpop palettes, or shall I do a tribute to Amy's video being a new concepts for Colourpop palettes video? So it was redesign, new concept. Redesign, new concept. Both? So today's video is both of those things. I'll be presenting four redesigned palettes from Colourpop, and four new palettes that I have designed myself. Oh my god, bin wagon. So I'm going to go through it in the same style as my last redesigning eyeshadow palettes video, being predominantly in a voiceover style, so you can see the palettes, and also I still can't put them next to me. I, I, you just get text. But I'm really excited to show you these different concepts and redesigns, and I just really enjoy redesigning palettes and designing palettes, so this is something that comes very naturally to me, and I was really excited to make this video. So we'll start with the redesigns, and then we'll go on to the new concepts. So if you want to see both of those things, then do not go anywhere. Before I start the redesigns, hi. This is my new holding screen, featuring that cute little illustration of me for my new outro sequence. I drew it myself, and I'm really proud of it. Also, the redesign portion of this video is inspired by the amazing makeup struggles. She doesn't make videos anymore, but you can still follow her on Instagram. Okay, onto the redesigns. So the first palette I did was the Element of Surprise palette. This got clearanced out a while back, and I'm almost certain you can't get it anymore. This was kind of a random release, and it didn't really make much sense to me. For a palette with such a gorgeous front cover, the inside was kind of underwhelming. You have elements of pink and purple in there, but where's the funky green on the cover? You put a really cool green colour on the cover just to not have it in the palette. Gosh darn it, when will you learn? So basically I wanted to make this neutral palette with a pop of pink and purple into something a little more whimsical, and came up with this. Not too far from the original, but just enough to push it. I kept feels and made late night into more of a rusty gold, then kept silk street and made ray on a brighter metallic orange. I gave go with the floor a more coral hue, and bright and subdue, and also I didn't realise how subversive that was. Kept opulent, then I made Labyrinth into that bright funky green from the cover. You know I had to put it in there. I made Blank Canvas a little more of a terracotta brown, and made Sea Stars more mustardy. And finally, I made details a dark aubergine metallic and brightened peace of mind just a touch. This still keeps a little bit of neutral, but explores some more whimsical options, in a similar way to how Good Sport does it. Put it this way, if Good Sport is an autumn palette, this is a spring palette. Next palette, you had me at hello. Another quite random release, and this one apparently was supposed to be a Kathleen Lights collab, but it got changed at the last minute, so they just reused the packaging and covered the label with a sticker. Genius! But I'd describe this as a moody neutral palette, and part of me wanted to keep that essence while incorporating a more sunset, stargazing feel, like on the cover. I didn't want to go balls to the wall crazy, just give it a little punch. And I came up with this. You see what I mean? It's just a little punchier while still being somewhat moody. I gave the knot more of a purple hue, made Moonstruck a matte pastel yellow, with two peas as a pastel orange next door. Candy Grandma made this light metallic pink that still felt calm, but a little decadent. I made Winning Ticket a faded metallic copper, with FBO as a brighter matte orange next to it. I made Luxie brighter, then made Fool's Rush a more regal gold. I decided to make Pulling Strings and Want You Back these really cool purple shades, one lighter and one deeper, just to cool down the whole palette. And then I kept the last two shades, DTR because it's a really cool shimmer, and Sparks Fly because it works well with the other colours. Again, I could have made this really bright and eclectic, but that's not what I think this palette needs to be. It's good to have those moodier moments now and again. My next redesign is the It's a Princess Thing palette from the Disney Designer Collection. 
This is a nice neutral palette, but it doesn't scream Disney princess to me. It just doesn't have those elements that reflect the characters, and that's what I wanted to do with this palette. Again, I didn't want to go too wild, but I wanted to give this palette more versatility and have more ties to the original films, so here's what I came up with. Now that's better. I kept Chip as a matte setting shade because that made sense with the name. I felt like Juju and Grumpy were too similar, so I kept Grumpy as a rosy pink matte and then made Juju into a pea green to match Tiana's wedding dress from Princess and the Frog. I kept Triton as a brown transition because, I don't know, flesh? And then I made Abu more of a terracotta brown to match his fur. I made Prince Charming a gorgeous regal yellow gold because I wouldn't have it any other way. And then I went ham on those other shimmers. I made Ray more distinctly yellow tone to match the character of Ray and his light. I then made Fairy Godmother a metallic baby blue because, um, that's what she wears. And also, baby blue feels like a very positive, optimistic colour which matches the spirit of the princesses. Or maybe I've just been listening to too much Carly Rae Jepsen, I don't know. One kiss I made silver to match Tiana's evening dress in the scene where she kisses Frog Naveen. Also, it's a reference to Cinderella's dress, which was silver in the original film. Not blue, as the merchandise would have you believe. It was silver. For Thingamabob, I settled on this murkier oceanic blue, just to diversify the palette. Fun fact, in the part of your world scene, one of the Thingamabobs that Ariel keeps in the little chest is this exact colour. It's destiny, folks. I made Enchanted Rose a very, um, rosy metallic pink? So that Poison Apple next to it could be a bright metallic red, as it friggin' should be. Magic Carpet, I made this very specific purple that matches the one in the film. Well, I think it does, at least. You can take my opinion with a grain of salt. It's not too blue, it's not too pink, it's right in the middle. And it's metallic. The last two shades I made mattes because I felt like that made more sense. Beast because it makes more sense when deepening a look. And then Midnight Curfew because I just prefer a matte black. Overall, I didn't want this to be too mad and be a whole rainbow palette, but I felt like it needed a little lift to make it more versatile, more creative, but still elegant, and I think it's there. And no doubt y'all were expecting me to redesign this one, so here it is, the Disney Villains Misunderstood palette. I had very mixed feelings about this palette because I liked parts of it, but ultimately I think they played it safe. Again, I felt like it was missing a lot of specific character-related colours that I thought would make this palette more exciting, so I really tried to prioritise that and make this feel more like a villain's palette, and this is what came out of that. First off, No Spots was always going to stay, I think it's a great addition to the palette. Then I made Mongrels a light yellow gold, and Diablo I made a striking red matte. A bit obvious, but I like the colour. I kept Devious, but made it a little bit more saturated, and then I made Tragic a metallic ice blue, so that would match Hades and his fire hair. Yeah, the jury's still out on that one. I kept the Fates, I kept 101, because this palette obviously needs a black. Pain and Panic I kept two, but I made that a little bit more orange toned. And then I made Underworld into that classic lime green, the one that you see with Maleficent, Dr. Facilier, even Mother Gothel, even though she isn't in this palette. But that was the one colour I knew that this palette needed, so I put it in there. And then I brightened up Forest of Thorns, but ultimately I kept the shade because I think it's a really cute shade. It reminds me of Descendants. Now, Flotsam is a gorgeous shade, but I think it's too nice for this palette. If you're going to make Flotsam and Jetsam shades, they need to be dirty and grungy and... Uh, slightly unsanitary. <laughs> so I made Flotsam a murky khaki, and then Jetsam I made in matte teal. I felt like Fasil needed to be that very specific dark purple that Dr. Fasilia wears, so I made that happen. Saying I made a metallic lilac to match Ursula's skin because keep singing! And then for Revenge, I made it silver. God damn it, Colourpop's just so good at silver. And it works well with a palette, at least I think that. So this palette to me feels more like a true villain's palette, and I think it flirts with bright and dark tones in an interesting way. Let me know what you think of this one. Before I get onto the new concept, I have something that's sort of a redesign, sort of a new concept, and you can tell in the intro that I forgot it was even a thing. So, bonus palette? Basically I was debating what to do about the main squeeze palette because I faded it on the fix, but now I really like it, and it may or may not be on its way to my house. I still think it could go darker, but it's grown on me a lot. But I still wanted to explore the idea of a true watermelon palette, so I made one from scratch. And here it is, the watermelon palette. I included three true reds like the ones in the main squeeze palette, a light transition called In Hot Water, a brighter coral red called Square Up, and a metallic red called Melon Head. I then paired those reds with three greens, a darker true green named On My Rind, a light lime green named Bitter Melon, and a metallic cucumber green named Sourpuss. If you watched that episode of The Fix, you'll know I mentioned wanting a black for this palette, so I added one in the middle called Bad Seed. 
For the other two colours, I decided a light metallic pink called On The Juice, yeah, that is a Lizzo reference, and a red-toned brown called Ready or Rod. This just runs off the palette and allows for a little more versatility. I think this is a more specific representation of a watermelon rather than just a red palette. Let me know what you'd do with a watermelon palette, I'd love to hear your ideas. Now onto the new concepts. So I'm going to start off with an idea for a new monochromatic palette, and an area of eyeshadow I feel like Colourpop hasn't tackled yet, and that is grey. When I think monochrome, I think of black and white, so I decided to do a palette that looked as if it had been put through a black and white filter, including a lot of grey shades. So here it is! I've called it the Morally Grey Palette, <laughs> I'm far too proud of that name than I should be. I've included five mattes and four metallics, ranging from stark white to pitch black. I included the existing black single shadow, let's do it, because why fix something that's not broken? Then I included a matte white called Blank Space, and also a metallic white shimmer called Polar Vault. That's another name I'm far too proud of. I included three grey mattes and three grey shimmers. The mattes are light, medium, and dark greys, called Just My Type, Too Cool, and Rooftop. For the shimmers, I included On a Whimsy from the existing lineup of singles, because of course we need a silver in there. Then I have a steel metallic called Metal Mickey, and a dark gunmetal metallic called Pew Pew. Overall, I feel like this has a good span of the grey market, and would be a great addition to the lineup, even if it was just a viral trend. The next two palettes are part of my idea for what the next series of Colourpop palettes could be about. We've had the monochromatic palettes, now I think it would be a great idea to go into specific intersections of colour, certain niches that are interesting and fun. The first one that came to mind was Blurple, that being a combination of blue and purple, so around that intersection. So I designed a palette around that, and here it is. The Blurple Rain palette is made of some true blues, some true purples, and some colours in between. The blues start with Dust Bunny, a light and bright metallic blue, then a dark murky matte blue called Cloudy Morning, and an even darker, rich matte blue called Shadow Play. The middle row includes a pastel cornflower blue called Little Lies, perhaps a reference to a show I've been loving this year? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Next we have an ultra bright metallic grey named Soda Cap, and a rich Capri purple named Boogie. And then the last row is the purple row, starting with a light matte lilac called Twyla. This was named after the Monster High character, whose colour scheme really inspired this palette. And then finally, we have two purple metallics, a bright bubblegum purple called Fantasy Ride, and a metallic black current named Jazzberry. This is a palette I haven't really seen before, and I'd love Colourpop to go into this department someday. The next concept is a similar idea, a specific intersection of colours going from one to another, but this is a little bit less unique and a bit more tied to a trend. You'll see why, because it's a yellow and green palette, and it's also kind of a Melt Gemini do. But I think Colourpop could use a palette like that, so here it is. This one's called Nature Calls, and I totally went overboard on the packaging. But it's that intersection between the oranges, yellows, and browns, and green. We start off with Tiger Stripes, a light pumpkin orange, that's on one side, and then on the other side we have Wilderness, a darker gingerbread brown. And then in between those, in a nice little sandwich, we have a brown-tinged khaki called Dirt Cheap. There's an even darker shade like this, Under Wilderness, it's called Mud Wrestle, and it's a very dark khaki. On that same row I put in a metallic green gold called Shaw Shot, and a muted canary yellow called Empowder. Those are all the shades that are more similar to Gemini, but for the last row I went for some more true greens. So we have a light lime green called Frog Hopper, a true metallic green called Heimlich, and a darker sage green called Paddock. These shades are definitely inspired by Gemini, but I think it works for Colourpop because it's covering bases that weren't really touched in the yellow and green palettes that they've released already. So I think it works. And then finally, on the topic of dupes, the last palette is of a similar origin. I've always said that the one Kat Von D palette I would have liked to get pre-controversy was the Pastel Goth palette, and that got me thinking of making a Pastel Rainbow palette in that same style. So I made one! This is the Light Nut palette. It's majority matte, like the Pastel Goth, but I wanted to add some metallics too. So I added a metallic light orange called Easy Squeezy, a light berry purple called Rosy Posy, I promise not all of these names rhyme, and a metallic white called Glitter Moon. These just add a little dimension to the palette, and I love Colourpop's metallics, so it would be a worthwhile addition. Then we have six mattes. A strawberry milkshade called Fraise Fair. <laughs> Get it? Like, Laissez Fair, but with Fraise, which is strawberry for French. Okay, I might have tried too hard with that name. Then a pastel yellow called Lemony Gem. It's much more simple. A lavender called Pony Up. A baby blue called big blue sky, a mint ice cream looking colour called cross stitch, and then a pastel grey called ambiguous. 
I tried to make this palette as encompassing of the rainbow as possible, but I also wanted to include specific tones and vibrancies. I'd hope this is a worthy competitor to the pastel goth, but let me know what you think of it. And those were my redesigns and my new concept. So I redesigned the Element of Surprise palette, the You Have Me at Hello palette, the Disney Princess palette, and the Disney Villains palette, and then created four new concepts, including a pastel rainbow palette, a blurful palette, a basically a Gemini dupe, and then a all grey palette. So let me know what you think of these concepts. Let me know if you have any ideas for different palettes that Colourpop could come out with in the next year or so, because I definitely want to see Colourpop expand their palettes into a new direction, especially since they've just finished the monochromatic series. I feel like the next logical step is to do sub-areas between colours, so doing like blurple and then like olives and mustards, and trying things similar to that. I think that that's quite a logical next step, but I'm sure they have some ideas up their sleeve. Hopefully they'll be quite interesting too. So thanks for watching this video. Let me know if there are any other palettes you want to see redesigned on my channel because I'd love to give it a go. Some of these makeup brands have been doing a little too well, so I haven't really had much to redesign. But either way, thank you for watching this video. I've been Ari Lynette, you've been amazing, and coming up with these end lines is really difficult. Bye. Thanks for watching! If you like this, give it a thumbs up and come say hi in the comments. You can find me on Twitter at Ari the Network and on Instagram at Ari Lynette. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Love you for watching.